which is uh, since uh, 2011, uh, when the new constitution of Hungary came, came into power uh, force, uh, has been the only kind of uh, counterbalance to the, to the very powerful uh, 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 role of the judicial office. Uh, which was mentioned yesterday. Uh, so practically the only, only organ uh, uh, back in Hungary, which somehow tries to still uh, uh, protect judicial independence uh, in the country, which is very much dismantled in the last uh, 10 years. Uh, Viktor Vadas is not only member of this council, but he was very much uh, instrumental uh, to somehow uh, get rid of the the previous head, powerful head of the of the office, uh, who, as a sanction, became uh, judge at the Constitutional Court in Hungary. But anyhow, at least she is not not anymore. Uh, uh, using uh, uh, her previous discretionary power. Uh, so I don't know whether, whether we should discuss the issue of East-West divide, but uh, I don't know who else uh, realized during uh, Madalina's presentations that all the case laws referred to in her speech with one exception of a Portuguese case uh, were all from East Central Europe, mostly from Poland, Romania, and Hungary. So uh, with that, uh, I give the floor to, to Victor, who I, I guess will speak about freedom of expression, not only in Hungary, but probably in the region and wider in, in Europe. So Victor, the floor is yours. Thank you for the introduction. I will try to share my uh, presentation. There we go. I hope you see see that. Since I was introduced, I will just uh, immediately start in medi in medias res uh, with my my short presentation uh, about the freedom of expression of, of magistrates. Uh, of course, I don't want to bore anyone with, with long academic uh, uh, lectures. The other speakers have a greater knowledge on this issue. But my starting point is the freedom of expression itself, because as we all know, freedom of expression is a basic fundamental right. It's one of the cardinal rights guaranteed under the European Convention of Human Rights, because it is closely linked to democracy's political process. And it is an indispensable tool for minorities and the civil society. The European Court of Human Rights has a consistent assertion that the interference with this right can be justified only by imperative necessities and the exceptions to this right shall be interpreted narrowly. The limitation can be justified if the measure is prescribed by law, it has a legitimate aim and it is necessary in a democratic society because of a pressing social need. It is very important to anchor that as a general principle, judges also have the right to freedom of speech and expression and the limitation to this needs, the limitation to this uh, needs to meet uh, these criteria and shall not go beyond this, which means there are certain limits for this limitation. I find it necessary to start with this because I see a tendency, especially in countries where the respect of rule of law, also the independence of the judiciary is not evident, uh, they were mentioned already uh, in the, also the public trust of the judiciary and also the perception of independence deter deteriorated uh, in the past few years a lot in these countries. And uh, the judges and judicial bodies, judicial associations seem to have problems overturning this neg negative tendency. Also in the same countries, we see that uh, judicial administration or the government is trying to mute judges. I think the negative tendencies uh, has a direct link with the, with the freedom of expression. What we see in Poland and Hungary, 
that there are huge struggles. Judges need to fight for their independence, which is constantly challenged by the government and also internally by the judicial administration. Uh, distinction can be made between the Polish and the Hungarian judiciary by the reaction of judges. In Poland, the judicial associations and the collective of the judiciary, uh, they are quite resilient and tenacious. Meanwhile, in Hungary, the judges seem to be asleep or apathetic and only a very few judges speak up. But what is the reason? Why do they react differently? The answer has something to do with the interpretation of the freedom of speech, I think. In my opinion, judges need to understand the nature of the limitations of their freedom of expression, and they should use the remaining freedom to raise public trust. In the next, uh, I think, 15 minutes, I will try to explain the limits of the limitations. Then I will give you some Hungarian examples straight from the trenches and conclude with, with the possible outcomes. In most of the European member states, it is uh, prescribed by law that judges have certain limitations to the freedom of expression, but is not limited equally. And there is no consensus in Europe. Therefore, the states have a certain discretion to set this level according to the doctrine of margin of appreciation. For example, in Lithuania, judges were allowed a few years ago even encouraged by the Judicial Council to give a public statement regarding their own cases and explain the judgment to the public. Meanwhile, in Hungary, this is strictly prohibited. Only the president of the court or the sp spokesperson can make a public statement or comment on the resolution. It is very important that court decisions uh, shall be explained in a clear and understandable matter to the society because it raises the public trust in the judiciary. But uh, at this level, it is not significant whether the judge answers the question to the press after the resolution is passed or an assigned person on behalf of the court does this. There is a more important limitation to the freedom of expression. And this brings us to my main topic, uh, the concept of political activity. In most European countries, political activity is prohibited for magistrates. I think the crucially important questions are the following. Is it a political activity if a magistrate criticizes the legislation or certain legal actions or any measurement of the government? Who defines political activity? Is this definition always foreseeable for the magistrates? Remember, it needs to be prescribed by law. Am I doing a political activity speaking about the rule of law and fundamental rights right now in an international conference while meanwhile, the Hungarian government argues that Hungary is constantly attacked by NGOs and liberal scholars with the rule of law. The prohibition that judges shall not speak freely needs to have a legitimate aim. Aims that justify the interference with the fundamental right are listed in the convention. One of these is the maintenance of the authority and the impartiality of the judiciary. Most of the cases regarding this issue, which were some of them were already mentioned, these cases deal with the external protection of the judiciary, the right for information about the proceedings, prevention, uh, improper, uh, improper influence on the trials, and the level of, of acceptable critics of public officials, and the protection of judges and prosecutors. But also, this is the aim of the limitation of freedom of speech of magistrates. It is not hard to see if judges are carrying out certain political activities, for example, giving a speech on an assembly of a political party, is entitled to freedom of expression, but in exercising such rights, a judge shall always conduct himself or herself in such manner as uh, preserve the dignity of the judicial office and the impartiality and independence of the judiciary. Moreover, I think that there is an even greater fear in the former so uh, socialist bloc where the people have uh, such an image of the judiciary where there is uh, no division of powers and courts are an integral part of the state, which is captured by one single party, 
Of course, I'm sure that might ring a bell in Hungary right now, but by, by nature, I think Hungarian citizens and Eastern European citizens with no regard to their political pre preference, they don't see judges as the good guys in, in general. And maybe that is uh, that might be an answer uh, that uh, Gaber was raising uh, before that, why are all the cases uh, uh, about internet, uh, judicial independence, recent cases are from, from Eastern Europe and not uh, other countries uh, mostly. In the if the interference is prescribed by, by law and has a legitimate a aim, still it can only go to an extent that is necessary to feel, fulfill uh, the pressing social need. And this will be the limit of the limitation. According to the Bangor principles, judges may participate in activities, appear at public hearing before an official body concerned with matters relating to the law, the legal system, the administration of justice, or any related matters. So also the Bangalore principles name these as kind of uh, counter exceptions to the freedom of expression or to the limitation of the freedom of expression. Going back to my, my questions, uh, if judges are criticizing government measures or they protest for judicial independence. Can an interference with their freedom of speech be justified? If the aim of the judges is to preserve judicial independence, how could the limitation be justified with the independence itself? My conclusion is, if the protest doesn't harm the dignity of the judiciary, it shall not be prohibited or interfered with. And also the Council of Europe has a recommendation on judges from 2010, which uh, says something similar, where judges consider that their independence is threatened, they should have effective means of remedy. I will go even further. I think it is a professional, almost moral obligation of the judges to speak up in, in such a case. Now I'm bringing some examples from Hungary. The first one already mentioned, so I will be very short on that, the Baca case. Andras Baca was a former president of the Hungarian Supreme Court, and he was criticizing the new administration model that was introduced in 2011, also mentioned by, by uh, Gabor, that the, hung the Hungarian government introduced this new model where before 2012, there was a Council of Justice, which was responsible for the whole judicial administration, where the majority of the members were elected by the peer judges, and the Council was presided by the President of the Supreme Court, who was elected by the Parliament with two-third majority. Uh, the operative duties of the Council were assisted by an office, uh, and the head of this office was appointed by the Council uh, itself. But then, after 2012, the Supreme Court was absolutely detached with the president who remained member of the Judicial Council, but all the administrative powers regarding all the lower courts, these were transferred from the council to the president of the office for the judiciary, also appointed by the parliament. Beside the Supreme Court president, all the other members of the council were elected by the peer judges, but all the significant competences were given to one person, appointed by the parliament, while the council remained with very weak status and powers uh, as a supervisory body. So from this point, not the council had an office anymore, but the office had a council. And this was a major reform, and this was criticized by, by Andras Boko uh, from the beginning. And so at the end of the day, the government decided that uh, they rename, rename the Supreme Court and elect a new president to the Supreme Court of the Curia, and also a new president to the judicial office before the mandate of, of Baka would end. So his per, per position was terminated uh, uh, immediately uh, before the end of his mandate. And the European Court of Human Rights, as it was mentioned, uh, found this as an unjustified interference with his freedom of expression because it was closely linked to his uh, critics to the government. The second uh, examples will be about the National Judicial Council of Hungary. Uh, as Gabor mentioned, as we got rid of the, the president, it was not that easy uh, to get rid of her and it was not, not intentious. We didn't want to get rid of her. We, want, we wanted uh, a proper functioning of the judicial administration. Uh, the system of administration as I mentioned, was not only criticized by, by Andras Baca beforehand, but afterwards it was constantly criticized by various stakeholders and international organizations, Greco, Venice Commission, European Commission, but the Hungarian judges and especially the Hungarian Association of Judges, the Mobie, remained silent in the question. 
However, in the beginning of 2018, the judges of the Budapest Regional Court and your Regional Court of Appeal, they asked questions from the National Judicial Council whether the practice of the president of the office is in alignment with the law on the appointment and promotion of judges and court leaders. And the council concluded, uh, OBT is the council, concluded that there were uh, serious deficiencies in the practice of the president of the office, lack of reasoning, total lack of eff efficient remedy, clearly uh, discriminative measures, and in general, this was uh, assessed by the council as a misuse of rights misuse of powers. As an answer to this, the president of the office launched a full-scale political attack against judges and against uh, members of the uh, council. She pressed some members and substitute members to resign and declared the council illegitimate. Uh, in the national broadcast, she, she called, actually she called me and one of my colleagues, traitors of the homeland for inviting the newly appointed president of ENCJ to Hungary. Uh, there were altogether five disciplinary proceedings against um, members of the council uh, and in the government friendly media there were defamatory articles, uh, they were published and it was a kind of a, like a smear campaign against the council and certain judges, which never happened before in Hungary, it was a totally new thing to, uh, to us. Uh, it was so so such a scandal, such a, uh, a campaign that, for example, in one of the papers in the media, I, I had an, my name had a hashtag. So if you put my name in the searcher, it listed all the results with all these defamatory uh, articles. Uh, meanwhile, the European Union became in Hungary the scapegoat and uh, was presented as a political enemy of the Hungarian government in the, in the media. And Hungarian judges, of course, need to apply EU law, just as all European judges. And in 2019, a Hungarian judge ordered a preliminary request from the Court of Justice. Uh, the basic question was about the right for a quality interpretation, but he was asking also questions about the internal independence of the judiciary. And on the motion of the chief general prosecutor, the Curia, the Supreme Court declared this order unlawful, which decision has uh, been public, published and now binding to our lower courts. And also a disciplinary procedure was initiated against this judge. And another example, my personal example, that in 2020, I was writing an article on Fair Fassung's blog with an, um, together with an administrative uh, judge uh, of the Curia with the title, A Game Hacked by the Dealer. This was in this article, we were criticizing the Hungarian case assignment practice of the Curia and concluded that it does not meet the European standards and it is not in alignment even with the Hungarian legal regu regulations. And uh, very soon, the new president of the Curia, who was appointed by the parliament against the objection of the National Judicial Council, he immediately confronted me publicly and asked me to revoke my statements as they were false. Nevertheless, I haven't heard or read any denial or counter opinion ever since. The question is how judges react in a situation like this. In Hungary, closing the courtroom door was the reaction, and mostly this is the reaction. They are closing the courtroom door. They don't want to let anything in. They try to act as these threats would not exist. There would not be a serious rule of law crisis in Hungary, or this would not affect their judicial work uh, at all. Why? Because 99% of the cases are irrelevant for the government, and the remaining 1% are the relevant cases, mostly in the capital city. Therefore, most of the judges, they won't face a problem during their everyday work, and they believe if they behave well, won't be rebellious, they can work in peace. So if the rebellious minority is muted, the majority will voluntarily choose silence. But what are the consequences if you close the courtroom door? First, very soon, there will be an insurmountable distance between the reality of society and the judiciary itself. This is what we can describe as judges. They don't live in the society, but in an ivory tower. Just as all state institutions, the judiciary will not be transparent and judicial independence will be seen in the future as a 
kind of a privilege of, of a small group of people. The silence won't stop the other branches of powers to increase the pressure, to gain full control over the judiciary. The voluntarily silent judges will, will get the same reward for their cooperation, what they what the muted judges receive as punishment. At the end of the day, we will see that public trust and perceived independence deteriorates rapidly. And we all know that if it is very easy to lose public trust, but it's very, very hard to gain it back again. The legal order of the European Union and also the uh, economy is based on the mutual recognition of national court decisions which is based on the mutual trust. Mutual trust will be a fiction very soon in Europe, I think, because if rule of law backsliding won't be stopped, no one will trust Poland and Hungary, not the government, the state, all together with the judges, with the courts. So instead of closing the door, judges need to open it somehow, I think. For this, they need to understand that they do have a freedom of expression. Moreover, they have a professional obligation to defend the rule of law. First of all, how judges see themselves. Uh, in Hungary, most judges see themselves, I'm afraid, as executors of the national law, highly trained state officials, bureaucrats who are solving cases instead of delivering justice. When I'm reading judgments of the international courts, whether the Court of Justice or the European Court of Human Rights, uh, I'm, I'm reading, they describe the national judges as they are the first line of defense, protecting the human rights and applying international standards enshrined in the conventions and in the treaties. It does not match. We need to change our own image to raise public trust. We need to change our own image to become uh, protectors of, of fundamental rights. Judicial training is crucial, not just transferring knowledge on EU law, not just raising awareness in general, but these trainings should aim to change the way of thinking, uh, to remain impartial. I will also criticize the European Commission right now, because at the moment they are forming, formulating and preparing the European training strategy. And I, it's very good that the European Commission emphasizes that judicial training is crucial to protect rule of law, but they don't seem to care that the national training institutions might be captured in some countries and uh, there is an adverse selection for the participants and lecturers for these uh, EU trainings. It's not accessible to all the judges, I think, in Poland and in Hungary. The judiciary needs to learn how to communicate uh, with the society with the media and also how to use social media. All judges are responsible for the image of justice, I think, also the silent ones. And there are no kind of abstain votes in this ballot. If judges learn to communicate, I think the first message that they should deliver is that judicial independence is not a privilege of the judges, but an integral part of the right to a fair trial. Your right citizens, not mine. If you people don't protect your judges, they won't be able to protect you when the time comes. Thank you for your attention and the opportunity to share this with you.